Hello, I'm Bernard Rieke, and I'd like to present our most recent study where we investigated how to best move through virtual environments if you also have to interact at the same time. So both locomotion and interaction are crucial for many different applications in virtual reality, so it's a bit surprising that much of the prior work has really studied them mostly in isolation, so either interaction or locomotion. Even though when we physically move through the environment, it's relatively simple to interact at the same time. So you might wonder, why don't we just always physically move through the environment? Well, it's simply not always feasible, since so there's not enough space. If you want to move through a large environment, there might be safety concerns, people moving over, tipping over cables, whatnot. The movement speed is limited, so you can only basically travel through somewhat limited uh, spatial scales. And of course, there's things like fatigue. And on the other hand, we have controllers, but they have their own challenges. So one of the things we wanted to investigate here is whether leaning-based interfaces might actually help us to overcome some of the limitations of the standard controller thumbstick-based, such as the lack of vestibular proprioceptive self-motion cues. So you really don't have any perceived self-motion, which can contribute to disorientation and cyber sickness. And more specifically, we're also interested to see how locomotion effectiveness might actually interact with the effectiveness of the interaction. So to do this, we designed a gamified dual task where you both have to interact and maneuver. So the action part is you basically have to follow these objects that come at a speed of one per second to the beat of a music, similar to Beat Saber really. But at the same time, you also have to maneuver. So you're inside the cylinder that constantly moves uh, at a basically a smooth movement that you have to follow. And so we have an interaction task, an interaction score, basically how well you do the interaction task, and a maneuvering task, how well, which measures how well you can stay inside of this moving cylinder. And then we have a combined score, basically want to see, okay, how can you do this best together? And to do this, we compared four different locomotion conditions. So the least embodied one is basically the handheld control, where people simply use the thumbstick for velocity control, but use the direction of the controller uh, for uh, locomotion. We have the head joystick, which is a seated leaning based interface, where your deflection from the center where you started really determines how fast you move and which direction you're moving. Similar to the Navi board, you're actually standing. And with your feet, you uh, sense there's an inner wooden platter and an outer softer part. So you always know where the center point is. And finally, we have walking, which is just plain walking. So people always wore a head-mounted display and they were always physically rotating. So the only difference is really how you translate. So either by thumbstick, by seated leaning, standard leaning, and stepping, or walking. And so arguably, from left to right, we have an increasing amount of embodied interaction and proprioceptive and vestibular cues for the translations. Now, two of these interfaces are highly familiar. So in a way, you would expect that people might do best with those. Whereas the head joystick and Navi ports are the two leaning-based interfaces. Nobody really knew them or had tried them out beforehand. So in a way, that would predict people would not do so well. So when we submitted this paper, we weren't sure whether we would be able to run participants in the middle of this pandemic, but we actually were able and we're just able to analyze the first data. So I'm excited to show you some of our first findings here. So the total score, which combines locomotion and interaction, shows clearly that walking is indeed the gold standard. It does the best here, whereas the controller clearly performs the worst. But both the head joystick and the navy board, so both of the leaning based interfaces show some benefit, clear benefit over the controller. And this benefit is more pronounced for the navy board, which arguably is also a bit more embodied because you're standing and moving a bit more, so getting more vestibular and proprioceptive cues. Now, the interesting is also to look at the separate navigation and interaction score. So for the navigation score, we find a similar pattern. The controller performs worst, the walking performs best. The Navi board still shows a significant benefit over the controller. The head joystick only shows a trend. So not quite significant yet, but we also weren't able to run that many participants. Now, the interaction score is interesting because the interaction itself was always identical, yet people performed clearly the worst if they also had to control their locomotion 
with their other non-dominant hand using the thumb thumbstick, where this, uh, they did quite a bit and significantly better so if they were standing with the navi board. So, in conclusion, in a nutshell, walking clearly performed best, performed better than the leaning-based interfaces, which in turn still outperformed the handheld controller. And you might wonder why. I mean, there might be various reasons that we need to investigate further. So, leaning clearly provides a bit more translational cues, it's a bit more embodied, you have some proprioceptive vestibular translation cues. It's also hands-free, but note that people have no familiarity with this uh, navigation mode whatsoever. So in sum, even though we need to analyze the data in more detail, we can already see that the leaning-based interfaces are really quite promising and already outperformed the highly trained handheld controller, even a challenging maneuvering and interaction dual task. And of course we'll need to look more into the data and to understand better what is going on, but I think we're one step closer to improving performance over the standard controller-based interfaces, even though there's still a lot of work to do to really match the performance of physical walking. So stay tuned, and you can find more information on our website at icebslab.com. Thanks for listening.